Hello friends. Today I'm going to demonstrate how easy it is to extend other plugins. In particular, we're going to extend the users plugin to add some extra details about the user. It might be tempting to directly modify a plugin's code, although this has some consequences in that when the plugin is updated, it will overwrite any of your custom changes. So I'll show you a more suitable way to do this where you can still update and not lose your custom fields. Here we find ourselves in the back end, in the user's create user form. Now let's say we want to add some more personalized information about our user, like their favorite books and music. We'll probably want to add a new tab in here called profile to store these details. And there's actually two ways we can achieve this. I'll show you the first way now. So let's have a look in the plugins directory and inspect the contents of our user plugin. We'll go inside the folders, plugins, Rain Lab, user, and then inside the models directory, we can see the user model that we want to extend. Also, inside the updates directory, there is an update script that creates the user's table in the database. And this is usually where it might seem like a good idea to add our extra fields, but we should consider this area out of bounds, meaning that we shouldn't touch anything here. Instead, we should create a plugin of our own and use that to make the changes that we want. So let's do that using the scaffold command. We'll call PHP Artisan create plugin and let's call this Acme profile. This will create the plugin in the plugins directory for us and importantly it will create the plugin registration file. Now what we're going to do is create our own model to store our custom fields. So we'll call PHP Artisan create model in the acme.profile plugin called profile. And that's going to create our profile model class and the update script to create the database table. So let's add our first column. Let's make it a string and we'll call it headline. Let's add another column, which is a text field called about me. And we'll add a couple more columns here too. We'll say interests and books that I like and music that I like. So now we've defined our custom fields as part of the profile table. Let's add this to the version information file. So we'll say we've created the profiles table and we need to reference the script we're using as well. Now we can run the migration command here and that will create the table and we can see that's been done here. Great, so let's jump into our profile model and define how it relates to our user model. So we'll say this profile belongs to the user model. Now ideally we want to do the reverse in the user model down here too, to say that the user has one profile. But we can't do that because our changes will be lost by any updates. So we have to extend this model instead. And we do that by opening the plugin registration file of our profile plugin. Every plugin file has some initialization methods. You can read more about these in the documentation. The method we want in this case is the boot method. The code in here is called every time the application boots up. And inside here we can extend the user model by calling a static method called extend. This method allows us to add our own logic to the constructor of the user model. This extend method will work on most objects found in October and the first parameter is always the constructed object. Once in here, we can create our reverse relationship and say that the user has one profile and reference our custom profile model. So this creates the relationship by extension. When the user model is first created, it will set the has one relationship of profile. And what that means is when we're dealing with the user model, our custom fields will be available through the relationship called profile. So for example, we can access our new about me field like this, along with the others, of course. Cool beans. So now that our model is all sorted, the next thing we probably want to do is add the new fields to the backend form in the user update section. The story here is very much the same. If we have a look at our user model again and looking at the form fields, ideally we want to add the fields here but we can't do that because it's out of bounds. Luckily, we can do that again by extension. So let's go back to the plugin registration file 
and instead of extending the model like we have here, we'll extend the controller responsible for displaying the form, the user's backend controller. First, let's get our namespace references in order. We're using the RainLab user model down here. We'll also want to use the user's controller for the next step. And we'll call a static method on the user's controller called extend form fields. This method is defined in the backend form documentation. It essentially says any time a form is rendered by this controller, give us the opportunity to provide some extra fields. And it has three parameters, the form object, the model object, and the form context. From here, we can add the extra fields that we need by saying form, add tab fields and passing an array. And inside the array, we want to supply the columns that we created from our profile table. So we had headline, about me, interests, books, and music. So we'll grab all of these and paste them into the array. And for each item, we'll also pass in another array to set the properties as you would normally in the form field configuration file. So each should have a label and we'll also assign a tab. In this case, we'll have a tab called profile. We can also do something quite special here. Because these fields are of the profile relationship, we can define them using a HTML style array, making them proxy fields. This means the values are pulled from the profile relationship and also pushed to the profile relationship when saving. One more thing we need to do is say that these last four fields are of the type text area, so they render as such. We'll also tidy up the labels so they look a bit more interesting. Now if we go back to the user form, we can see our new fields have been added to the form under the profile tab. Perfecto. As a final step for this approach, we need to be conscious of a few things. Firstly, when a user is created, a profile needs to be created for them too. We can fix this by adding a quick helper method to our profile model. We'll add a static method in here called getFromUser. And what this will do is get a profile from the user if it doesn't already exist. So we'll say, if the user has a profile, just return that. Otherwise, we'll create a new profile, assign it with the user, save it, and just like the above, we'll return that object. Another nice thing to do would be to set the reverse relationship as well. So that's a handy little helper here to ensure that the user always has a profile ready to go. In addition to making sure the user has a profile, we should be polite and say that this controller should only be extended when the model is a user. So if the model is not an instance of a user, we want to stop. We also want to stop if the model doesn't exist because we can't create a profile against a model that doesn't exist. Lastly, let's put in a check to make sure the user has their profile. We'll add a namespace reference first as profile model and then we'll say profile model get from user and pass in the user model here. And this will ensure that the user always has a profile before we add these fields. So let's take this for a test drive. We'll create a user and note that the profile tab isn't there and that's because the user doesn't exist. So we'll quickly fill out these fields as someone named Adam person and then click create. Oop, and what's happened? We have an error. And that's because I forgot to add the foreign key to the profile table called user ID. So let's go and fix that up. So we'll open the table migration file again and add the user ID index. And then we'll go back to our console and refresh this plugin to rebuild the database and add the user ID key that we need. Good save, good save. So let's take two on that and we'll refresh the page. And now we can see it's automatically created the profile for this user. Now we can put some text in our new custom fields. I'll just enter some random text in here. And now when we save the model, we can go and have a look at see what's happening in the database. There we go. So now you can see the data has been added successfully to the Acme profiles table. And that's happened through the users plugin form via a proxy field. And that's a handy feature to remember when working with relations. 
So that's the first way to extend the user model. Now you're probably thinking, wow, that was complicated. Well, the second approach is actually much simpler, but it's not as powerful. So let's explore that now. What we can do instead is add the profile fields directly to the user's table. So instead of creating this relationship with a custom profile, we can take the easier approach and remove that relationship. We can remove the proxy fields. They will be linear fields added to the user table. We don't need the profile model at all. And we don't need to check that the model exists either. But we should still check that the model is a user because if somebody else adds a form to this controller, we don't want to pollute it with these user fields that we've extended. And as you can see, the class is looking cleaner and much simpler already. Now let's create the migration file that modifies the user's table to add our custom columns. We'll call it add profile fields to users table.php and we'll also add it to the version file here. We'll copy the contents from the other migration file that we've got and rename the class to match the file name add profile fields to users table. Now instead of creating an Acme profiles table, we want to check the table that the users plugin is using for its users. So if we look down here at the users plugin, we can see it's creating a table called users. And so this is what we want to extend in our alternative approach. We want to add our fields directly onto this table. So let's change the table that we're working with here and we'll make it say the users table instead. We also don't want to drop the users table from here because that would be catastrophic. We simply want to supply the names of the extra fields that we want. So let's do that. And it should be just like in the profiles table. Instead of dropping the table, we should just drop the columns that we've added. And lastly, we want to change our declaration here. Instead of creating a table, we just want to modify it. So we change create to table as per the Laravel documentation. And before we go and run this, there's one more thing we need to do. We need to make sure that our profile plugin always runs after the user plugin has created its database tables. And we do that in the plugin registration file by defining a dependency. We say that our profile plugin will require the rainlab.user plugin. This will ensure that the extra columns that we've added will always be executed in the correct order. So let's try that now. We'll refresh the plugin and let's have a look at our table structure to see the new columns that we've added. There they are. Great. So let's summarize. We have two options for extending the user model. The first option was by extending through a relationship and that would be accessing the data via user profile about me. The second option was extending by direct structure and that would be extending the users table and adding our columns directly to this table. Both have pros and cons. The first is more flexible because you have a dedicated model, whereas the second is more simplistic and you can decide which you prefer. Before we wrap this up, I just want to show you one more trick. Just as we've added our custom form fields, what if we want to add an extra list column? We can do that using an almost identical function called extend list columns. This is also in the documentation under backend lists. It takes the same arguments except without the context. Inside we can say list add columns and let's say we want to add the headline to the list. We can do that in the same way using a list column definition as a PHP array. Now when we come back to the list and refresh, we can see that there is a headline. So that's how you can also extend the backend list of another plugin. And that concludes this demonstration on how to extend other plugins. We hope you enjoyed this demonstration and thanks for watching. Goodbye.